Hey everybody, and welcome to this dose of Dr. E and Dr. P. He's Dr. E and I'm Dr. P. And today's dose is on supplements. And why are we talking about this? Well, guess what? We just learned that 86% of Americans are taking some form of supplement or vitamin. So if you're watching this, the chance is you're taking something. But the flip side of that is that only 21% of people have some kind of confirmed deficiency or, or whatever that they're actually treating it. So it's really important to know what these supplements do, what they don't do, what you're taking it for, what is safe, what's not. Any opening comments? No, I, I agree with you. And I think uh, we want to give you the message that some supplements are important. They can help you when it's documented that you're low in that particular vitamin, mm -hmm. for example. And so this is the, this is the main message for yeah. our, our dose. And people get in trouble because they immediately put supplements into one category and pharmaceutical drugs into another. In general, people think supplements are healthy for me, they're benefiting me, they're preventing something, they're good for me. And pharmaceutical drugs are treating a problem or disease and they're kind of negative. You have to keep in mind that the pharmaceutical drugs go through rigorous studies to get approval the supplements do not. And in fact, if a supplement makes any claim, when you go to GNC or whatever, and it says bone health, neuro health, eye health, they have to have this disclaimer yeah. on it, which says, this dietary supplement is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. That's a strong statement. And remember, you could come up with a dietary supplement uh, as a company and come out with it in two or three weeks, and it takes a pharmaceutical company seven or eight years. Right, and so what that means is that the onus of the responsibility falls on you as the consumer to know what you're putting in your body, is it safe, is it doing anything for you, et cetera. So in general, big picture, keep in mind that it's much better to get the nutrients and, and, and vitamins and everything from your diet. It's absorbed much more efficiently when you actually eat these things rather than you know pills. So just saying, oh, I'm gonna take a you know, multivitamin or this or whatever, sometimes that's not absorbed, sometimes it's not you know, helping you. And there are absolutely true deficiencies. Some common ones are vitamin D, iron, calcium. These things can actually be diagnosed, and this is where the supplements and the pills can actually be really helpful to treat true deficiencies to get your levels up to a normal level. Yeah, and that's for sure. And we also wanna point out that um, to know what you're taking, because you can take too much Right. of any supplement as well. So getting into the diabetes nitty gritty, what are the most common ones that people take for diabetes? Well, cinnamon. What do you want to say about cinnamon? Cinnamon does not improve your diabetes control. I don't mm. care what you look at, what bottle you buy, it's been studied formally. Now, if you put it on, if you eat your cinnamon through Cinnabons, you're really gonna mess up your diabetes. So, you know, really don't buy into the hype. It, it's really not effective. Certainly not as effective as a lot of the fantastic diabetes medications we have now. So if you're taking it, ask yourself what you're really trying to achieve with it. Go through your, your fab, fab yeah, four. Well, first real quick, chromium is another common one people take to control That's their true. blood sugars. But that's actually been shown to potentially worsen kidney disease, so you have to be careful with that. St. John's wort is another one, another common one, but that can actually thin the blood and have negative interactions if you're on blood thinners. So you just, it, like, just because something's in the health food aisle doesn't mean it's completely safe. Why would you take something that causes you to get warts? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so here's my recommendations, our recommendations, four points when it comes to supplements. Number one, this sounds simple, but know what you're taking it for. I think a lot of times people fall into the trap of, I just want to be healthy, or like, I just want it to be good for me. Take something natural. And, but how do you measure that? So if you're going to take a supplement, there should be something that you're trying to gain from it. I want, I'm trying to take it for sleep or my mild neuropathy, or maybe it is for my blood sugars or cholesterol, but be mindful of, of the specific reason you're taking it. Definitely. And then that streams lines into number two. If you are gonna take something, um, do a little bit of research as much as you can reading on the right dose. So the, the common example I love to use for this one is fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids. So those have absolutely been shown to improve triglycerides, a, a beneficial effect. However, to get the effect, you have to take massive doses of it. Those tabs come in these like horse pills. And to get the effect, you need to take five of those three times a day. And most people, when I ask them, they say, I'm taking fish oil, they'll take one a day. And that, yeah. that literally does nothing for them except make them smell fishy. You know, I know the people that take the correct dose, the, the 15 pills, they smell fishy. They, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, it goes through the skin. 
So here's an example of something that actually is beneficial, but if you're not taking the dose that shows benefit, then, then you're not doing anything for yourself. And if you read the label on the supplement you're gonna buy, if you can't figure out the dose, the correct dose, then huh, I wouldn't take that supplement. All right, so one, know what you're taking it for. Two, try to figure out the right dose. Three, measure your success. So whatever you are taking it for, actually maybe even journal, put a little note in your iPhone, whatever. Here's how much I feel like I'm sleeping at night. Here's my pain in my toes out of 10. Here's what my A1C is or my cholesterol, whatever. Take your supplement for whatever reason you're taking it and then come back to that a couple weeks, month later. If it's improving, fantastic. If it's not, then maybe you don't need to spend the money or swallow these pills. Yeah, I, I would just say one more thing is that, you know, if you're, if your healthcare professional prescribes a drug for your diabetes, it's really important not to stop that and start a supplement that has, you know, a potential promise to improve your blood sugars. Absolutely. And that's that's the time that I actually get upset. Don't stop your regular medications. You want to take a supplement, make sure it's safe. You can take it on top. Well, great. This is my fourth point. Let your provider know about your supplements. Maybe not Steve, because apparently he gets upset. But no, the point <laughs> is that we actually, don't get upset. We don't get mad. We don't get angry. But I do think that's a problem that patients can perceive that, oh, if I tell my provider they're going to, you know, kick me out of their practice or just be angry, X, Y, or Z. We absolutely need to know. So when people ask what medications are you taking, include the supplements in it so we can at least give some kind of guidance or, or know what you're on. Because as I mentioned, some of these can be beneficial and some of them may not be. So that's my four point system um, when it comes to supplements. And that's, that's it. Just know what you're taking. Thanks everybody for watching. See ya.